Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm back here on the stage at TGP, and I'm gonna show you how I set up our multi-tracks for our Sunday morning services. So we use multi-tracks playback. I'm sure a lot of you are using the same software to run your tracks at your service. I have ours set up right next to our drummer. So our drummer controls these tracks. I've been before where the booth controlled them, but I'd rather somebody on stage be able to do that. And since I don't have a music director or anything like that, it is uh, really easy for me to signal our drummer what to do. At some point in time, I hope to get one of those Bluetooth pedals that I can control it myself from the front if I wanted to rerun a section or anything like that rather than giving a hand signal. Right now, they're sitting on our drum kit. We have an M2 MacBook Air that we use to run our tracks on and it's USB um, along down to the track rig from Loop Community. Loop Community is another company that does tracks. Uh, I don't love their track system nor their particular tracks that they have, but the track rig is great. It gives us USB out of here and gives us eight analog signals that we can send then into our system. So we have eight channels to be able to work with. So I actually do use all eight and I'll kind of show you how I have that set up in the system over here. So we'll dive into the computer and I'll show you how we have this set up. When you open playback, this is your main window of what it looks like here. You can add songs and all that. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna show you kind of how we have things set a little bit. So the first thing you come in here, I don't have it on right now, but uh, once I turn on the tracks rig, it would show up there. And this is all your settings here. Once you click those three lines in the corner, this gives you a bunch of settings here. And this is where I'd select the audio device. Currently it's for the speakers on this computer. Some things that I have set that I really like, I don't have auto panning on. Uh, the click sound is classic. Um, something that's really important is this count into each section. If you don't have that selected, it'll just say verse and then not count in. I like having it saying verse two, three, four, and giving you that extra count into the section you're going into. And then if you're needing to start over some someplace, it does the, the pre-roll here. And you can see all the other settings that are in here. I don't mess with most of these. Most of them came set up this way. Uh, something else that I did do though, we're gonna go over to tracks and you can see all the different tracks that multi-tracks has when they create these different songs show up in this window and you kind of program them to go together. So there are certain things that I'm going to have to put together in a bundle. I only have eight tracks to send out obviously, which is a lot, but I kind of have to bundle them together. So you just kind of name the different pieces in what section you want them to go to within this window here. So a 12 string guitar here, I have set to go to the acoustic guitars and you can see how that all lays out. All you have to do is click on where you want it to go. So the accordion is set to go to aux. All I have to do is click on the aux word there and then I could select, say I wanted to put it in the string section and then click done. That's not where I want it. I'm gonna put it back in the aux section and I'm gonna click done. And so you can go through and every one of these potential options, not every song has all of these, but you can see the vast array of potentials that they have. And you can go set these all to go into their particular place. Then what I do is you go in to select your buses. And within your buses is where you can choose where each thing goes out. So all of those bass names that we set up in here, so the acoustic guitar, strings, all those sorts of things, you then go in and set them for where you want to go. Right now, once again, it's just on this computer. I don't have the tracks rig on, so it's all just gonna go to left and right, one and two. I can go in and select for where they wanna go. So, just so I can show you that, I'm gonna turn on the tracks rig real quick. So you saw a pop-up on the screen there saying it's recognized now the tracks rig has come up, and you can see all of my outputs have changed here. So our click is going out of eight on there. Our click and our guide, drums are in six, um, so as percussion and loops, anything that is set in the track section named either percussion or loops or drums are all going to come out of channel six. I have bass coming out of channel five. So a lot of times I'll also have anything that says synth bass. I have that set to bass in my track section 
and then it's bussing out of channel five. Piano's in one, keys are in two. I like to have those separate just cut so you can EQ those. A lot of times the key stuff is more synth pads type of things. The piano is actually that piano sound, so I kind of want those separated out. Um, I have electric guitars going in one. I put my acoustic guitars in the same section with strings. There's not a lot of horns that come out, but a, the, a lot of times there's strings or there's the acoustic guitars, and I kind of put those in the same section as they kind of have the same body to them. Um, if there are horn, horns, they come out of that too, but I'm not really concerned about it. Pads come out of number two along with the keys, and then vocals out of seven, aux stuff out of three. So. You can see all of that right there. You could go set MIDI cues in here if you want to. I'm not using MIDI out of here uh, right now, but you could do that if you'd like. Once that's all set, you don't ever have to go back and change it. It'll recognize that every time you turn the tracks we're gone, all of that stuff will turn on and be locked back into how you set it up. So you should only have to set that information once. Now I've got my blank screen here and there's a few different ways that I can load songs for my service that's coming up, say, this weekend. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now, one thing I do is I have my Planning Center account connected to my Multitracks account so they can read each other and talk to each other. I'm using some of the rehearsal mix stuff out of Multitracks to send to Planning Center so that my team can have more to practice along with the music, along with clicks. They can raise their parts and hear certain things. So I have that connection happening. Another really useful thing in there though, I also export my service orders into Multitracks and let Multitracks pull in the songs from there. So I'll set up all of my service orders that I have the songs already loaded in. Multitracks can pull it in and then I can pull it in over here. So let me show you that way because that's the way that I'm doing it most often. I can either do this from the, the web software for Multitracks or from within the software on the computer. And since I'm in the software here, I'll show you how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on these lines with the music note, and I'm going to create a new set list. So what I'm, the way I'm gonna do it is I am going to open a set list, and if I had loaded it on the website, they would show up here. So you can see past ones here. These are past services that I've loaded on the website. Upcoming ones, I don't have that set up yet. This is just opening this window here. So here's what I'm gonna do instead. I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna click on Import from Planning Center. I'm gonna go into my Adult Worship section, and you can see all of the services that I have coming up here in the next several weeks. So we're gonna be doing July 2nd is when this is being done, and I'm going to cl click Import. And once I click Import, then I just have to go click Load, and it will load those songs into my setup here. Now we do use the rentals for Planning Center. We're not buying each song each week, so we have a certain amount of rentals that we're allowed to use a month, and those rentals last for a week. So today is Wednesday, Sunday is coming up, rehearsal is tomorrow, so I've got plenty of time. So I'm just gonna, for all these songs that we're doing this coming week, I'm going to, going to click continue and go ahead and rent the content. Once I've done that, they'll all start loading and I just gotta wait for them to load in. If there are any errors that pop up or anything like that, it's not too hard to fix. So we're just waiting for a moment. All right, let me go back. Some of them didn't catch, so I will click to download that one. That's good to go. And I'm gonna click to rent this one. It didn't catch, rent selected song. So then it'll pop back in. So now all the songs are pulled in. If, you, if I wanted to, and if I needed to add another song or anything screwed up or anything like that, I could kick, click this edit button. And this is how you can just do it if you're just in the software, not have that connection. This is how you would do it to add your songs uh, manually. I would click edit and then I can click add song and then I can go search for any song that I wanna do. Let's say that we were going to do I Speak Jesus this week. I would type in it and then I can go find the version that I want and click on it and select, and then I would click rent. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna use another rental, but that's how that gets done. In this window, you can see all the pieces that now go along with each one of these songs. So you've got your window here that shows your entire waveform and how it's broken up into the different sections. We'll uh, touch on how you can edit your own versions of songs in just a moment. Down here, you also have all of the faders that go along with all of the different tracks 
within your song. So you can make your own custom kind of set of how your volumes go along and just scroll over and you can see every volume for all the different breakdowns of the tracks that are within this waveform and going along your song there. Also on the left here, you have your options for your click, your accents. Uh, you can change the, the note volumes, pulling those up. And you've got your guide right here as well. So all of those are right there for you. Now, a lot of these, you probably have the instrument that is playing this part. For instance, I'm sitting at the drums. I normally have a drummer here. So I, I probably want to turn off the actual drummer drum tracks from the song. To do that, all I have to do is come click on the name of it and you can see it grayed out. That means it's muted. So anything that is full white like that means it's going to play through your system. If you click it, it is muted. So if I had a bass player on for this weekend, I would turn off the bass. If I want it to play, I leave it on. So you can go through all those different pieces. If you did want the background vocals in there, but not as loud, you wanted them as more support for your team rather than be the front uh, backing vocals, you could just rather than mute it, pull down those volumes a little bit. So they still go out of your system, but they're a little bit lower in the mix. You've got all that control here, and then you have master volume control, as long as everything's good, but you need it to be a little bit louder, a little bit quieter to push out properly, you can do that right here. The nice thing is something that Multitracks added within the last several months was originally these master faders, was, it was the master fader for the entire set. So if you changed it, it was your entire set. But some of these songs, their overall volume can feel different and may have been mastered at different levels when the song was recorded. So you might need what I see to be quieter than This Is Our God. But now what they've done, they added in that each of these faders are song specific for the masters. So now if I go back, you can see that my master volume drops back down for what I see and goes back up for This Is Our God. And then I have all individual control once again for each of the sliders within the song itself. The next thing I'll often do is generally when we start our set, and a lot of you probably do this as well, the first few songs just kind of run together back to back to back. Rather than having to have my drummer click through each time, I can set multi-tracks to go ahead and transition to the next song. So the way I do that, these first three songs, I want them to transition from the first to the second to the third automatically. So I'm gonna click on this arrow here and it's gonna give me options. So you can see what each one of them does. This first one, that's automatically, this is the default that they come in. All it does is cue the next song. So the first song finishes, goes all the way to the end of the track and then it stops and just sends to the next song. So then all you'd have to click is the space bar to start that next song. Um, if you've got this next one, it would stay in the song. If you wanted to stay in that song, go back and repeat for any reason, uh, leave some space and then go back with pads playing, things like that. You could stay in the song, um, continue the pad so it cross fades over. These are the three that I tend to use down here. Auto link. What it does is it completely finishes all the way out to the end of the track, and then it automatically starts the next song. Most of the time, what I want though is an overlap or a crossfade, so that while the end of the tracks from the first song are fading out, the click and things are starting over the other one, so I get a nice blend across. The difference between overlap and crossfade is probably some level of how those cross, I really don't know. I tend to just use overlap and then to do that. So I'll tend to just go between all these first three songs and just set it to overlap. And then normally we have our announcements and then we'd be doing this next song. So I leave that to just cue to the next one and then I'll cue my drummer to start that. And then this is the song that we're gonna do at the end of service. Once again, this will automatically send over to this song when we walk off stage. It'll all be ready to be set when we come back on stage. So all my drummer has to do is hit the space bar and he's good to go, the song starts playing. So that setting between them, them. There's some other little edit things that I wanna do and I'm gonna show you how to do this as well. So I'm gonna go back to what I see and I'm gonna click my edit button right there. When you click edit is when you get the access for adding or subtracting parts. Say we didn't wanna do verse one and two for whatever reason, all I'd have to do is hit this minus right there and it'll take it away. If I wanna add that back in, I'm gonna to go to the section 
where I want to add, if I want to add something after a section, I'm going to click the plus button afterwards right here. So I want to add that verse back in right in this spot. I'm going to click that plus button and then it gives me the list of items that I can add in the different parts of the song. I'm going to click verse one and now it's popped back in. So that's how you create your arrangements. If you need to go through, add another chorus, remove choruses, remove sections, you can do that all around here and you could really rebounce the whole thing. Something to just watch for is obviously there's different volume levels and the way that the song was run together that may cross over in some of those parts that may not be exactly what you want. So you kind of have to play with some of that sometimes. The other thing that you get access to when you are in the edit window you can remove the song entirely by hitting this minus sign and getting rid of it. This is also where we were clicking to add a song in, but I wanna to go to these three dots in the middle of the song. And within that, you have several options for the song itself. Um, if you've got any arrangements that you've created and then saved and stored, you have access to those in here that you could select a different arrangement. Uh, and that's where you would save your new arrangements. You can see what tracks you want to use. You could turn some of them off within there. This is also where you could change the key of the song. If you needed to change the key, if you did it the way that I did it and loaded it in through Planning Center, if I've changed the key in Planning Center, Multitrax is gonna recognize that when it pulls it into its software. And so if we were doing what I see in B instead, it would have already set that based on what I put in Planning Center. But if you need to change it again here, if you get to rehearsal and say you're the person who is singing it says, hey, I've really been struggling with that key, can we move it? Then you have access to do that right here and also tempo. The other, the thing that I normally turn off is this start pad with song because I tend to have my pads running from pro presenter and what I have loaded in there. I don't want them coming from here. So I tend to go through and turn all of those off. So I'd click that and I, then I'd click update. Another option that you have in here is your start and end points. This is something I'll play around with when I am doing those crossfades between songs that if one of them is taking too long to crossfade out and I want it to end a little bit sooner, I'll go in, I'll change my endpoint, I'll go find a good endpoint, and then do a five second fade so it fades to that timestamp instead and starts my crossfade based on the new uh, timestamp. So that's really useful in there as well. But mostly what I go in and do here is I just turn off the pads and I need to do that for each one of these songs. Uh, the nice thing is if you do save an arrangement, so I could go in and save that as an arrangement as my default TGP arrangement, and it would always have the pads turned off, but I haven't done that to save these extra arrangements to take up the space doing that. Once I've got everything like I want it, I hit done and I'm ready to run my set. I can, at rehearsal, I can click into any of these songs and just play it and just run it that way. And on Sunday morning, we'll just be right there hit play, it'll play those first three songs together, and then it'll pause for the next sections that I've got to go. If you do wanna turn on a pad at any point in time, you can just click it right here, and it'll start playing the pad uh, in the key of the song that you're currently selected in. So if I actually wanted the pads in A, for whatever reason, I would need to be on a song that is in the key of A, and then it'll play the pads in those keys. Multitracks is, robust there's a lot in it that you can do there's a lot in the software on online that you can do even more and pulling things down and how things work and utilizing with pro presenter as well and using using with your lyrics sending midi cues out of this to your pro presenter so that you're getting all of your lyrics in time all that sort of thing i'm not doing a whole bunch of that but this is a really robust software but it's actually really simple to use as well you saw how quickly i put that together and that was in pretty much real time there it comes together really quickly and there's either way whether you're loading in the songs yourself or you're setting it up beforehand or pulling stuff in from planning center it happens very very quickly gives you all the tools you need to be able to run your services on a Sunday morning and have the fullness of the music with your tracks. So guys, I hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions more about multi-tracks, let me know in the comments below. Do all the things that YouTube tells you to do, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.